You're All right, welcome. guys, so bringing it out to the couch now for discussion. Kevin, I also know in addition to that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't even know what to call that juxtaposition. But, yeah, so essentially the attorney general is in the same room as the president today while his vacation home is being searched. But this is also the special counsel's first day on the job, special counsel her, who will, we are told, be briefed on the results of this investigation upon its conclusion. Well, certainly there's more questions than answers. You saw David Spunt reporting. Uh, I think you're seeing from the, the Biden administration and the president's personal lawyers and team Bob Bauer out there saying that we're fully cooperating. That's the message clearly that the Biden team wants to telegraph to everyone, uh, both in terms of the search of Rehoboth, the search at Penn Biden, and the search in Wilmington. Now, we've seen about 25 or so documents. We don't know necessarily what they involve in terms of uh, those documents with classified markings. Um, so again, to your point, I think there are far many more questions than answers at this point. Special counsel, both uh, for her, uh, in this case in terms of the Biden uh, look, the special counsel for uh, Trump in terms of Mar-a-Lago. Uh, also, we still don't have a lot of updates on that, and that's been going on now for six months. So I think there's a frustration out there. We want to know more, but the special counsel uh, process has to play out. Sure, we want to know more. Let's play a clip of the president saying yesterday just how much we know and how much we're entitled to as American public. Watch. What I can say is that we have been cooperative and uh, transparent from the outset. We've put out multiple statements from the president's personal attorney describing the process and being clear that the president takes this seriously and that he cooperated and will continue to cooperate with the Justice Department in full. Yes, Ainsley, so they've been adamant that the president has been cooperating. In fact, that's one of their main touchstones. But that's true, true, and unrelated to whether the law was broken. We know national security policy, at a minimum, was certainly thrown out the window. Um, and it's against the landscape of this broader position that the Department of Justice has taken, which seems to have put the president, the sitting president, that is, with the kid gloves in Absolutely. his own special position, right? Absolutely. Oh, go ahead, have your attorneys check. No problem about their classification clearances. Oh, go ahead, take your time telling the public. The list goes on in stark contrast to how a former president was treated under our watch and with our taxpayer dollars. Yeah, it's such a double standard. And I'll go through that list of why I think it is and why many Americans do. But first, the operative word there, I believe, is transparency. They haven't been transparent. <clears throat> they found this November 2nd. The election was a few days later. Why didn't we know about it? They never told us. Then you had Merrick Garland, you had Christopher Wray. They were bragging about having the special counsel there to investigate Donald Trump. Meanwhile, they already knew that the that classified information was also found in Biden's office at the beginning of the month. The FBI searches that think tank in mid-November, 68 days later, after they found that first batch, the public learns of it. Documents were also found in the Wilmington house. There was absolutely no raid. Look at Hillary Clinton. She destroys 33,000 emails with, with bleach bits. She takes Ugh. the SIM cards out. She uh, destroys uh, information. Her, her Blackberries are destroyed with hammers. More top secret information Hillary Clinton had than Biden and Trump combined. She was never raided. Look at Donald Trump. Mar-a-Lago, they go there, they meet with him. He sits down with them. He cooperates. He complies. They say, put it, they call him back later, put a padlock on the door. He does that. Then they raid him in the middle of the night or in, when it was pitch black dark in the morning. Uh, media was there. It was all over the news. Everyone was talking about it. We immediately knew about it and we all reported on it. He was treated differently than, than they were. And then Hunter Biden, what does he have on his laptop? Oh. 2011, yeah. it's, it's information about Russian oligarchs that he's offering to sell to Alcoa Aluminum for $55,000 when he had his drug problem. Was that classified information? We have so many questions and it's just unfair how Republicans Republicans are treated based uh, compared to Democrats. That's such a great point, Ainsley. And, and do you remember, um, I believe now it's been a week because every day is 100 years in our lives here. <laughs> um, but that, uh, one of the city representatives pointed out a document that had been found on Hunter's laptop. It was an email that he had communicated to business leaders. And interestingly, it read just like a classified briefing where he, for, for some reason, it's like that scene in, um, what's the scene where Will Ferrell blacks out, like debates awesome. Oh, it was old school. Was, old, yes, school. old school. It read like that, where all of a sudden Hunter Biden, you know, in between calling his, his mother expletives and, and the, the children of his uh, ex-wife other expletives, he all of a sudden had this cogent political analysis where he was projecting who would be the next leader in charge and things, you know, geopolitical things that would happen in Ukraine all of a sudden. That seemed to mirror a classified document. Now, we don't know the veracity of that, but those, that's what a sitting congressman pointed out to the mainstream media. And I wonder, to Ainsley's point, just who else benefited from these classified I mean, documents? you can only assume that he had access to that information. You know, you can only assume based on what his dad had at the Penn Biden Center, which was classified information 
situation on uh, China, Ukraine, and Iran. So, you know, these things, it, it's very interesting because there were at least two intersections where Hunter was intimately and professionally involved with absolutely no professional experience in these realms. Yet somehow now he's a very handsomely paid Ukrainian energy czar. And, you know, who knows how close he was sitting to documents in a number of locations. And why would anyone be surprised that they found classified information at his beach house? You know, he's got it in his house house. He's got it in one office. I want to know, are there other offices? I also want to know, you know, who had access to this information? I, I still, it bothers me when people try and rationalize on behalf of the president saying, well, he's cooperating now. That's not the problem. Mm -hmm. The now is not the issue. How did they get there? Did Hunter have access? Did he use that to enrich himself? There are so many more problems here than they, they bear to admit. And yes, to your point, it is an unequal application of the law and law enforcement. That's right. So many problems, so many questions that you raised in that that we will find the answers to in the investigations, including his, the extent of his role as the energy position, et cetera. Um, and Cassie, to Kennedy's point, it's really disheartening as an average American watching this unfold to see that the highest representative of this administration is treated so differently, that every American that is expected expected to uphold law and order seems to be let down by the one person that should be the most emblematic, that should model the most yeah. um, application and adherence to law and order. And how often do we hear, feel that inequity between, you know, the well-connected and the wealthy and the rest of us? But I'd also note that you've got public servants who have top secret clearance, who have accidentally walked out of a skiff with a document. And they're, they're facing charges, you know? And so why is that not applied in the same level? And Kennedy, you hit on something that I'm really curious about, the visitor logs. Mm -hmm. They don't keep them in Delaware. That's always been a thing. Who visits the president? From a doctor to a foreign national. I think that's, if he's gonna spend that much time at locations that are not the White House or Camp David, we should know. Um, and then what do they have access to? <laughs> With Hunter, I mean, that guy has no ability to not share anything. There's no censor on him. So to your point of all these connections he has, I don't think he has any ability to decipher if that's something he should share. Yeah, we learned that the hard way. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.